Okay. So this um, lecture is about um, maps and folds, which are higher order functions on, on lists and extremely useful functions and sort of give you a sense of the power of, of higher order programming, which you can do in all your favorite programming languages now, but which is really kind of the essence, one part of one of the essences of programming in Haskell is to be able to do this. So suppose I want to apply a function to every element of a list, the same function to every element of the list. Let me open a terminal down here, new terminal. So, you know, if I had the list um, one dot dot, let's say, um, four, and I wanted to multiply every element by two, well, there's a built-in function called map, and I could say times two, and one dot dot four, and I got two, four, six, eight. Now, how, how could map be written? Map is written by recursion on the structure of the function that you want to do, because um, it's really the structure, by recursion on the structure of the list you're applying the function to, is what I mean, mean to say. So map and some function applied to the empty list, but wait, I'm gonna make same introduction for every function that I define by recursion on list. There's two, at least there's two cases. So if I want to apply the function f to every element in the empty list, what's the after the empty list? If I want to apply the function f to the list that has an x on the front and is uh, followed by x's, I can say, oh, that's f of x ponds on to, and then through the magic of recursion, map f to x's. Okay, so let's go over here and, well, I'm, now I'm typing like uh, Emacs commands again. Okay, load. Uh, oh, I got to save this. Save this. And then I got to say load higher order. Okay, I got loaded. And um, so I can map times two, whoops, sorry, app times two I get two four six eight. So I get the same thing, but this is how the function is implemented. Now what went on here up here what's going on up here is that to avoid a conflict of map with the map that's built into the prelude. So up here in the prelude, I was using map. The prelude is a file, is kind of the, the core library that's by default loaded with every, uh, every time you load the interpreter or every time you load a module, by default the prelude, all the functions in the prelude are there. So, so <clears throat> what I did here was, um, I used the keyword hiding to hide the functions that I didn't want to see for, imported from the prelude. Okay, so that's map. That applies a function to every element of a list. Um, you know, what could you do? You could say, like, you know, um, You could build it in. You could say, you know, plus one all. Oh, okay. This is the empty list. And so then I say x plus one const on to 
plus one all of x's. And then I have a, I have a function that will apply the function of adding one to everything in a list. But then I might need, you know, uh, times two all. And it's going to look the same. except for the operator. And so then I'm going to say here, okay, x times 2 times on 2 times 2 all. Okay, and so you could do this with every individual function, but map let you do this once and for all. And so, you know, plus one all prime is just equal to map of plus one and times two all is just equal to map of times two. Now, if I try to load this, I'm going to run into a problem because of that. And so I think I can save that. Oh, I need to put a prime here. I need to save that. And now I should be able to go down here and load my higher order. Oh, what is it not liking? Um, oh, I forgot to apply it to X's here. Okay, so I could say like uh, time to all one dot dot four, and then I can say also times um, two or let's say plus one all one dot dot four. And that's the same as map plus one four, which is the same as my plus one all prime. I should probably just briefly say that this might look weird to you. Like, how does this system know that this is a function from integers to integers here? Well, it knows it because, I mean, I could put the integer here. I could say, okay, times to all of um, uh, list. I mean, I could put the list here, x's, and then I could put the list over here, x's, and I still have the same function, but I don't need the trailing x's. You'll often leave it off because what is the type of map of times two. It's a function that takes a list of numbers and returns a list of numbers. And that's exactly what this says here. And that's exactly what times two all does up here. It takes a list of numbers and returns a list of numbers. Now, why this one became more specialized is because maybe, what is the type of two? It's a number. I'm not sure why it's integer, arrow, integer, but let's not puzzle on that right now. Okay, so the thing is, is the point is, is that I could write these really tedious functions like this one. For every time I wanted to apply a function to every element of a list. I could write a new function that takes a list as input and returns the resulting list as output. Or I can just do it once using map and using higher order functions. So this eliminates all this code. Um, this code is useless. This code is, I can just type in map plus one wherever I need to use it. Um,
is a control K C comment K. So all this stuff is useless. Once we have map. Okay, we just need map. So now, what about, um, so map has this interesting property. Well, let's try it. Prop um, map length. And if I give it an X's, and I would say that um, map F over X is the length of map is equal to the length of the list is the X's. It always gives back the same length. Um, so if we look at that, oh, that's got to be an equals equals. If we look at the type of this, it takes a list and, um, returns a bool. I left out the F there. I needed to, I needed to put the F in there. And so now what's the type? Well, this is dead. And so now the type is, it takes an A1 arrow, A2 arrow a one list arrow bool. So we'll we'll save this and we'll go down here and we'll um, load higher order and we'll oh I gotta I'm sorry I gotta put I didn't put quick check at the top. Let's see import test dot Okay, that should enable me to run this test. Save this again. Go down here, load it again. Right. So now I can say quick check. And I want to test prop map length. And I'm going to give it plus one. And so I'm testing a function from a uh, list of integer to bool. Because I've given it one of the arguments. So whenever you, this is a, uh, I said before, there's two languages here. Everything on the right of double colons is a type and everything on the left is a program. But if you put a parentheses around an expression like this with a double colon in it, the computational thing, the program is prop map length plus one. And I'm applying quick check to prop map length plus one, but I'm also indicating the type. And it passed 100 tests. So the point is that um, the length of the list you get back um, from a map is the same as the original length. So there's it doesn't change the length of the list. What if I wanted to like do something like, you know, sum up all the elements of a list. In other words, add up all the elements of the list. Well, if the, um, the empty list has nothing in it. <laughs> so when I add up all the elements, I need to use the identity of the operator that I'm using over here. Because here I'm going to say x plus sum of x's. And what will happen here is eventually <clears throat> the sum of x's will get down to the empty list. And all the x's will be waiting to be added on. And you get this will become empty. And then you'll add zero. What if I say product?
For list functions, re, functions defined by recursion on lists, I always know they're going to be these two cases. Um, okay, so what's the product? Well, the identity for multiplication is one. And so I really want to say x times product of x is down here. And eventually, this is going to get down to the empty list. And if it was 0 there, I'd multiply it by 0. And so I'd always get 0. And so what if I say um, compose? And so what I want to do here is I want to have a list of functions I'm going to call them F and Fs. I'm going to say, okay, look, if I want to compose together all the functions in the list, the identity element, which you proved earlier uh, for function composition, is the identity function. And otherwise, what do I want to do? I want to take F and I want to compose it with the compose of Fs. Now, what is this saying here? Oh, I need parentheses on this one. Oh, I had first. It, it typed in first for me. Okay. Um, and so the type is it takes a, a list of functions from B to B and then a single element from B to a, a single element of type B and returns an element of type B. Okay, let me save this. Let me go down here and load higher order again. Okay, everything loaded. And so I can say like sum of 1 to 10. Okay, 55. Product of 1 to 10. Oh, it's some big number. 3,682,800. Now, compose is a little bit trickier. Um, because we can't print a list of functions. Like if I try to say, what's the type? I can ask the type of the list of functions, like let's say two times and, you know, um, let's say plus one comma times two. And that's a function, a list of functions from number to number. Okay. So now what if I want to compose that same list? Copy. Put that down here. Um, what's the type of this thing? Okay. That's a function. It's waiting for a number. So I can actually just execute this thing by saying like, okay, five. So why is the answer 11? Well, remember that compose of F and G means apply G first. So the second one gets applied first. So they get applied in the reverse order that they appear in the list. So this is two times five plus 11. What if I say, um, if I swap these, What do I get back? 12. 6 times 2 is 12, as opposed to 2 times 5 plus 1. So I can compose together. But the thing is, is that, look, all these functions, I mean, if I get rid of these darn types, really, I mean, if I get rid of the type there, oh, it just insists on showing it to me. These functions all look almost identical. It, it, it won't let me get rid of them. Sum empty zero, product empty one, compose empty ID. So what's the commonality there is that 
Zero is the identity for the operation plus. One is the identity operator for multiplication. And um, I, the identity function is the identity operation for function composition. So I can write this function and in Lisp, we always had reduce and I could say, here's the operator and here's the identity. And now I just tell you what I'm going to do in the cases um, where And so what am I going to do? Well, if the list is empty, I just return the identity operator. Identity. Now, this maybe is confusing. I could call this um, um, well, I mean, it shouldn't be confusing. I have a parameter called ID and I'm returning that parameter. This ID does not refer to the identity function. There, even though there's a globally um, um, defined name here or named a function defined in the prelude called ID that gets loaded, this refers to this ID. So that's just ordinary programming. So over here, what do I have? I have x op. Now my recursive call, reduce op id x's. So this is a reduce function that's going to collapse down in the same way that map applies a single function to every um, to every element of the list, reduce kind of builds the result of applying this operator op to a list. And in the empty list, you give back the identity. So um, now let me motivate it by giving some examples of what we might write. We might have written like, okay, the sum of, uh, oh, we already did, I'm sorry. We wrote the sum up here, we wrote the sum. And so now what we can do is we can say, okay, well, sum prime is equal to reduce plus zero. And product prime is equal to reduce times zero and compose prime is equal to reduce period ID. We can save that go down here and load it to make sure that the code is sensible. And now, you know, we could write test to say, okay, look, well, I mean, we could write one, I guess. Um, um, prop some use. And you give a list And you say, like, um, sum x is, is equal, equal to reduce of plus zero x's. And so this is a function from t to bool, depending, but although as long as t is a number type. And um, so let me save this and go down here. Ah. Go 
go down here and say and um, load it. And now I can say quick check. Prop some use. Now I can just do it like this. Oh, that's lowercase s though. Um, and it'll tell me it ran a hundred tests. Um, and you know, it ran them on number type, some number type. I think the default for number type is integer. I could have specified that explicitly by saying, oh, okay. Um, this is a function from int to bool. And whoop, list of integer to bool, I'm sorry. And past 100 tests where it put in integers. I could put in here, you know, I think I can put in here float, you know, for a more interesting kind of random test and it passed the test. The point is, is that here's another case where I didn't write down the list. Of course, I could write X's here and I could tag the X's on the end of this, but I don't really need to. It's the same type. Look at the type here. And then if I get rid of the X's, get back the same type there. Okay. So reduce, except we don't really, in Haskell, we have two kinds of reduce. Look, if you look at how this thing is doing, like if I do, you know, like, um, and in fact, this reduce is really called fold R because it's folding with to the right. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. So here's my fold R. And so this is really fold R. I don't know. Is there like a replace all or something like that? There is. How do I tell it what to do? Yeah, I would just want you to do it. Oh, it's not doing it. All right, what's it? It's in it everywhere, and well, that's okay too, I guess. Okay, so this is really oh, this should have been fold R, not fold L. Oh, God. all right, fold L, fold R. I mean, oh. Now, why is it called fold R? It's called fold R because um, it folds things to the right. Like if you go through this, um, if I look up here and I say like, okay, well, first of all, what's happening with some? Suppose that over here, like I'll just make a little comment and I'll say like, okay, some one, two, three is equal to, well, it's equal to one plus the sum of two, three, and that's equal to one plus two plus the sum of three of the list containing a three which is equal to one plus two plus three plus the sum of the empty list, because remember, 
this is really just three colon empty. So, and then this is equal to one, one plus two plus three plus zero. So it's grouping to the right. And when we wrote this, and the same thing here, it's multiplying and it's grouping to the right. Um, and the same here with compose, it's grouping to the right. And so this is called a fold because you're kind of like taking this list and folding it down into one value in this case. And you're folding it with the operator associating to the right. Now, what if we wanted to do um, folding where it comes to the left? Now, sometimes this is not really um, can called the ID, although you probably want it to be a left um, a left identity. So let me just say, uh, you know, so like one times a is equal to a, and so the result. So that means. Um, one is, well, and I could say is equal to A times one is equal to A. So A is, so one is both a left and right identity. For A. For, I'm sorry, for uh, times. And so, you know, what I mean by that, i.e., one times a is equal to one uh, is a, and maybe I should just say, and a times one is equal to. A. Okay, um, so one thing is, is that unfolds. On fold L, this is it is going to turn out to be the identity that we want to put in there, but it's confusing to call it the identity because really it's an accumulator, and you'll see that in a second. So the point is, is that if you called a fold L with a particular operator and you gave it the identity and you gave it the, the empty list right away, you'd want to return the identity, which is just in the variable in the argument ACC. Down here, what do we do? Well, we say, okay, fold L and the op stays the same. And now what we're going to do is we're going to build um, the uh, apply op to ACC on the left and X on the right and recurse on the list X's. I'm going to let you look at that for just a, a second. So ACC is the accumulator and we keep building up values in there. So maybe I could just give an example of what would happen with like um, fold L of let's say plus and the initial value, the identity is zero. And let's take the list two comma three. Well, that's gonna be equal to 
by unfold by following the definition across fold L plus. And now what am I going to do? I'm going to take what was in the ACC before zero, add the head of the list onto it too, and apply that to the tail of the list. And so if I keep going, that becomes fold L plus zero plus two plus three. Now I'm applying to the empty list, and so then it's just equal to zero plus two plus three. So that's the way fold out. So let's let's try it down here. Um load higher order. Okay, so I'm gonna fold L plus Zero. Well, let's do two comma three first, and we can see that okay, it's five. Now, what's fold R on the same thing? Well, it turns out if the operator is associative, then um, then it doesn't matter if you use fold L or fold R. Although there could be efficiency reasons to use one or the other. Uh, and there could be, you know, fold L maybe is slightly preferred. There's a function called fold L prime, which uh, keeps evaluating, the, forcing the evaluation of this thing that's building the accumulators getting built up. In a lot of cases, that's the best one to use in Haskell, but not always. Okay. Um you know, we could create a proposition that said that fold L and fold R for plus were equal. Um, now, what about fold L for dot com compose with the identity function with uh, plus one comma times two? Well, I don't think I had you prove it, but it turns out... Ah, need to apply it to something. Um, but composition is also associative. So both fold L and fold R in that case give you the right the same thing. Now what about um, I don't know where's a where's a case um, that like minus, What about minus on this? Okay. On a fold R, what do I get? I get 1 minus 2 minus 0, and that's equal to minus 1. If I get a fold L, I get minus 3 because I get 0 minus 1 minus 2, which is minus 3. So you can get different answers. Uh, from the folds, depending on which way, you know, the what, depending on the operator, if the operator is uh, associative or not, and minus is not associative. You know, what do I mean by that? I mean that, um, you know, x minus y minus z is not equal to X minus, oops, minus Y minus Z. You can't just move the parentheses frowned, and this was a case where it showed that it was different. Okay, 
So that's um, folds. Now folds are pretty interesting functions. We can, it turns out we can fold on lots of different things like, you know, uh, like summation, summing up the, the values stored in a list. Well, you know, you can do the same kind of operation on almost every uh, sensible container type. It turns out that um, a type so like trees, for example, you could think of trees. Well, it makes perfect sense to run through the tree, adding up all the values stored in the tree. And you would do that with a fold. Okay. Thanks for listening.